Welcome to another My Little Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Bree. I'm here with my brother, Garen. Hi. My sister-in-law, Ellie. Hi. My fiance, Jared. Hello. And my brother, Bryson. Hello. Mom and dad are taking care of the chitlins. They're on baby watch. Yeah. They're, they're chilling out with the grandkids. <laughs> so we thought we'd sneak in here and talk about a couple latest weekly peaks that have just come out. The one that came out on Friday featured the RV build that Jared and I are working yes. on. And we had a lot of folks give a lot of responses to a lot of the questions that we had. So we want to say thank you so much for doing that. Before we get into that, though, this week's podcast is cheekily sponsored by the My Little Homestead t-shirt shop. If you'd like to get a fun piece of merchandise with all kinds of exciting, cute, colorful, and cool designs. You can check out uh, the link down in the description. We had a super exciting week this week, didn't we? Yeah. It was really fun. Before we get into the comments, let me just set up kind of what we did in the RV weekly peek that we did. And we redid all of the cabinets we this the, week. All the cabinets from start to finish with Bennett Wave. Got them all done. Luke Lund asks, what was the point of putting black paint under the white paint? The distressing that I've been told about, I think she did primer and then she painted everything black and then she painted everything white and then she would go through with the sandpaper just like what we did and distress it. That's what I was going in on and I don't know if I did it her way or not. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Although we do realize that Maybe we went a little bit overboard in how much black paint we put yeah, on. Yeah, because we weren't sure how we were going to distress it. So we didn't know like what parts. But if we had been a little bit more streamlined with our process, we could have just put the black paint in the areas that we were going to sandpaper. Like in the corners. Well, now if it gets distressed anywhere else, it'll all flow. Exactly. True. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. The accidental distress we've yes. got covered for the future. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> now we put on that black paint and we were absolutely cracking up <laughs> at the black paint. Yeah. Yeah, it was highs and lows the entire way. You went through like, I want to say at least four different stages of, oh gosh, I really don't like black paint. To, Maybe it works. To, I actually really like it. And then, then it went back to, nah. nah. <laughs> I think it was where you were looking at the RV, like from what angle. Mm. Is, that's what Bryson came in all black. Mm-hmm. It was like, there was like whoa <laughs> in some areas. I think Bryson came in at one point. He's like, oh interesting (laughs) (laughs) we captured it quite nicely (laughs) interesting it did look very interesting I was debating on if I really hated it or really liked it I I don't really know yeah. yeah, I think if there had been less black, we hadn't done the black where the bathroom is. I think if we hadn't done it there, I think it would have been honestly fine. Yeah. Because it would have been accent by that point. And if we got mm. like stainless steel appliances, I Ooh. think it would have looked fine. Yeah. Just yeah. just doing having the kitchen area, I agree. Yeah. That would look. With the bright blue walls too, it was fun. Yeah. It would be cheery that probably that way. Mm. But yeah. We put the question out of, do you like black walls or have you had any experience with them? Or if you do, you know, what those experiences were. We got a lot of really fantastic stories, but unfortunately. <laughs> we only have enough time for a few. Chantel McRae said, in my first house I had a black bedroom and I loved it. The walls were satin black and the ceiling was a glossy black and the trim was white. It worked because I had a lot of windows with white curtains trimmed in red flowers. Oh, That's awesome. Really yeah. cute. Yeah. Sounds really, really cool. cute. You just needed some of those glow-in-the-dark stars. Yep. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. You clicked those lights off. We had those on our ceilings when we were kids. Uh, yeah. Those were cool. Nice. Same. Yeah, with the myth like a random moon, you know? Ooh. Oh, that's really cool. Ooh. I always wanted those. The cool kids had those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Juggy Knot said, when I was a kid, I got migraines. Well, I still get them, but just not as bad. I had a black bedroom because I liked it very dark and also very cold whenever I had a migraine. So I had black paint and blackout blinds. It could be the sunniest day in the summer and it was pitch black. It was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Nice. If you had a bad headache, it's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great way to go. And then we had several folks say, too, that they work night shifts and the black room helps them sleep. Mm. So that was another mm. two that I thought was like, oh, that's that cool. makes sense. You know, you kind of adjust the environment to be able to sleep. And mm-hmm. I can see that being very yeah. beneficial. Now the stars would really become beneficial. It'd be fun. <laughs> It'd be really fun. It's like you're sleeping outside. At night. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I feel like if I went to sleep in that kind of an environment, I would never wake up. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, wait, no, it's still dark. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I, I still got time. I still got time. We're <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Oh, On the fridge, we're like, what, what should we do? How should we paint it? That was another question we put out. And we got so many fabulous responses. Lots of different paint brands for spray paint was recommended, which is wonderful. And one that was quite surprising was chalk paint. 
mm. was another one that was kind of interesting. Great idea. So thank you for mm. sending in those recommendations. Pamela J. Niren, author. Pamela says, have you thought about blackboard paint for the plastic fridge? That would look great. Thank you, Pamela. Yes, actually, I and mean, we didn't show this part, but when we were taking off all the little bits and pieces before we painted, there's some panels that slip out of the front of that fridge. And so we are going to do those in blackboard paint. And actually, I found a paint that magnetizes. So I'm going to do magnet, then blackboard. Mm, then so that's cool. We'll try. Uh, We're gonna get you know, I was thinking about this. You could have black and white walls. They're slatted. When it comes close to nighttime, it turns black. And then when it comes daytime, it turns light. <laughs> and so your walls are constantly changing yeah. to the time. A huge you know those, like, mood ring? Flat curtains? Yeah, that's yeah, what I was thinking. Something that's they could cool. flip maybe. Mm-hmm. And... Oh. <laughs> awesome. What if you painted That'd your room in like the mood ring paint? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Didn't they uh, paint cars? They painted I mean, cars. That, yeah, they did that. That was really was, cool. Yeah. This one DIYer I was watching on YouTube, they did a mood ring toilet seat, which yes, was... Evan and Caitlin. Which was hilarious. <laughs> and they just moved and they took that seat with them. You better believe it. <laughs> they, they contemplated leaving it behind for the for the next owners. That'd be the trippiest thing. That'd be totally worth the house for just <laughs> get one of those... <laughs> They put it in the guest bathroom too. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was like, that's what's me. Another thing that we did was for the couch, we finished that mm-hmm. couch up there. We yeah. took another we three inches it. off, and it's mm-hmm. glorious. We could touch with our feet, which is exciting. We went from toddlers to grown ups all in one <laughs> three inch swath. So that was pretty exciting. Janine Butlin said, Are you going to paint under the couch? It would look finished then. We agree. I think what we're going to do is put some palettes underneath there, like an offset slotted look mm. so yeah, yeah really get the line I think they were going to take a page from your guys' book and paint black but, behind it yeah. so that it's mm. I think with and we have all that cool. black paint that we still have so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to put that to use <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then we have a whole huge gap beside the couch that we plan on putting a charging station a charging station on you can so. get the wireless charging pads to put in there we we could do those I think we'll probably end up just doing the regular one though because you could throw a wireless one in there too too. We could. We could throw a bunch of different types. Dad even recommended some cup holders and stuff. Like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Great idea. Those hot and cold cup holders. Back heat and cool. For yeah. You. Yeah. 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 There. Wow. <laughs> you put your Yeti in there and it just never changes. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. It's the outside's burning, but inside it's freezing. Oh, man. Okay. If you ever leave your Yeti in the car and you go to drink, your bottom lip heats up, it gets burned, and your top lip is cold. Yeah. It's really weird Whoa. <laughs> because it's like hot on the outside and cold. And yeah, <laughs> we're not sponsored by that company, different. but we love no, our little cups. And Yeti, I mean, uh, the, hi. <laughs> Shoot us an email. <laughs> Your cups are awesome. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. <laughs> Rosia Reed asks, just checking to see if you've secured the couch in place. Would want to have an issue of it becoming dislodged while traveling. Planning on on at least one one edge of it. I basically just place a board down and screw it. And toenail it into the board right there. It only needs really one side to just keep it from chipping yeah. around. We don't want to be too aggressive with getting it on there and keeping it on there because everything needs to be able to come off because the water tank's down there. We mm-hmm. might need to service that tank at some point, and we don't want to bar ourselves out of that project. <laughs> so, uh, so that is the plan. But yeah. I think that that'll do it yeah. for us. So putting wood glue down to glue the couch down. <laughs> <laughs> you get your angle grinder and you come up to the bottom for the water tank. <laughs> <laughs> We're down underneath. Everyone's like, what's going on? We have a leak in our water tank. <laughs> we don't want to move our couch. Don't move the couch. It's really in there. <laughs> Carrie G said, I would take some trim boards and install them on the bathroom door and the walls on each side, which would make them look more high end. It would also make them more cohesive with the cabinets. Thank you, Carrie G. I love that that's idea. A, that's a great idea. Like, if we just get, like, maybe an inch trim of pellet, places where the trim is, we can re- just replace it since we need to replace mm-hmm. some of that trim anyway right there. And yeah. there's not much color going on there. Mm-mm. So it'd be nice to have some of that. I think yeah. that would warm it up. You know, too, you could take um, Dad's hand planer and, like, mount it, whatever height you want to mount it at. Mm-hmm. And then you could r- run them through as long as you got the nails out. And you could plane them down to a little thinner, and that might look nicer. Too. I mean, or you just find thin pallets, too. Yeah. There's a lot of those out there, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Also, you could use that to straighten the edge, I would think, too. Kind of sand that edge down, make it a little straighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Maybe a great idea. If you idea. have boards to put together. To. Great idea. That's a great idea. Well, it is a wall. It'd be kind of nice to have them a little closer to the wall, so less to be bumping into. Believe me, we will be bumping into it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys worked more on the van build, which was super exciting. You're just doing amazing stuff with pallet boards in there. I haven't yet to see it live and in person, but Mom and Dad said when they went in there, it's like just takes your breath away with how beautiful it is when you pop those doors <laughs> open. They're just amazing. It, you do the front of the van or that cabinet there. We did like there was a cabinet there that we redid the face on and then the back we finished up. We put some doors on it, put the face plates on it and stuff. It was right. Mm -hmm. So I'll finish up in it and, and doing the front part. It's mm -hmm. awesome. And then we had a little uh, side traction in it which was fun and that was uh, going on a trip to get some fish. Yeah. yeah. A fishy expedition for the aquaponic system. Mm -hmm. oh, it was so fun. So. <laughs> it was so fun to see that fish store. It was so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really fun in there. <laughs> yes. That's a really fun cool. little store in there. The kids look like they were really Oh gosh. <laughs> Cecilia was having a ball. <laughs> <laughs> really was the fish. Yeah, she does. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> yeah. You guys seen this? <laughs> Look at it, this is amazing. <laughs> B Bear said, Bobby here with two questions and a comment. One, the fish, with it completely dark in the tank, there won't be algae growth. Will you be feeding them? We've been feeding them. I'm letting a little more light in now to try and give the fish a little more of a daylight cycle. It's not completely black in the tank. I'm hoping to kind of help them stay healthy and hopefully breed. If they don't have the correct light cycle, they won't eat or you know things like that. Not, well, we haven't ever had any problems with the fish and they're not eating. We have problems with them freezing mm -hmm. um, through the winters. <laughs> so that's going to be a problem for this winter. But right now they're doing great. Second question here is the van, the upper cabinet in front. What is on either side? Could you open the space up bigger? It's an F-150 van that's just a passenger or cargo, not sure what it was. Some other company came through and added the pop out on the top of it. The pop out on the top, when it comes down to the front of the van, it's not it like a nice to, it round. It comes to the point. Right? Yeah, yeah, it comes to a point mm -hmm. right there and then it has like just two parts of it that run. Anyway, the cabinet is as big as it can get inside the front of that. It looks like there should be more space, but there isn't. That's why we just left the cabinet that was there and just yeah. covered the front with pallets to make it all flow. Easier than taking it down and building the, essentially the same thing in there. It's all carpeted and nice in there too, so. Nice, yeah, no slick and slip around yeah. on the road. Yeah. Nice. nice. Place to put electronics, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Right next to our 80 inch screen that's coming in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how it's going to fit. Yeah, uh, there's no room for us, but we got the TV in there, so. Yeah. <laughs> Just do good. a projector on the side of your guys' camper and on the side of the RV. Mm -hmm. We might be able to actually pull that off on the RV since the RV is white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be cool. You could do it on your guys' van, too, and then you get your 80 inch. You know, like canopies <laughs> on the front of the RVs that come out? Mm -hmm. Those would be perfect. Perfect. Most of them have white tops anyway. You could just Flatten fold yeah, it down. Yeah, just down. Uh, <laughs> it would be in front of the doors, but... Nice. Get some of those zero-gravity chairs and you got an outdoor there theater. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tammy Fraser asks, Hi from Vegas. Crazy question. Why would you need a lawnmower? I've never seen any grass there. <laughs> well... <laughs> excellent question. Yes. <laughs> Occasionally, we do get grass. Normally, our monsoon comes in and we do actually milk two years ago because we had a really bad drought last year two years ago i mowed Every two or three days before christmas like yeah, it, we, we had so we much get, grass yeah and we do get big rains and we got to keep the grass cut down because if it grows up wildfires can come through and just really wreak havoc so it's really good to just keep our grass low at least around the house also snakes like to hide yeah. in the tall mm -hmm. dry grass they're big yeah. to keep snakes too. So. and, and the crudes do as well the, oh yeah that was it was a <laughs> crude reference that is the <laughs> true statement yeah. oh it was <laughs> try, try hiding, hiding from it in the tall dry grass <laughs> <laughs> Janet Diaz says, My biggest regret when I own a van similar to yours was that I did not have the air conditioner completely redone when we had the engine replaced. The kids just roasted in there. We stopped driving it in the summer. Please, while you have the interior taken apart, really set the air conditioning up well in the back. Be sure it's running great, even if you have to bypass the computer. Thank you, too, for thank that comment. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we have thought about it. Yeah, we have thought about that one. The van does have a AC that does run to the rear. I have it all pulled out right now because we're building back there. But we're going to go through and make sure that system is working great, plumbing, all that. But that's going to be a little later on when we move into the rear box that goes underneath the bed. Yeah, we'll be building matter. more boxes back up there. So mm -hmm. yeah. we'll hide it in there. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy Wilson asks, Garen, what's the tool you're using to remove the boards? The van looks awesome. <laughs> It's a secret. <laughs> yeah, it's a secret. Um, <laughs> not really sure the exact name of them. I, I think it's reciprocal saw. Or saw. If you look up reciprocal, you saws do. Because it I saws think, everything. Yes, a saws yeah. all. I think that's oh. so it's yes. like... With the reciprocal saw, do you have to have like a specific <clears throat> blade for it? Or like okay, yes. So we've ran 
every different type of blade. We've cut up so many palettes. So it's a it's a reci- reciprocating saw, reciprocal saw. Yeah, reciprocal saw is what Dad would call reciprocal it. Saw? Too. Yeah. It's, so and if you look it up we'll, to we'll you with a reciprocal yeah. saw, yeah. you'll find. Yeah, we'll explain it on Dad if it's yeah. wrong. Yeah. 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 It's a, so it's a reciprocal saw. You can use really any blade you want. The metal blades work. The wood blades work. But you blow through those, and mm-hmm. the ones to get are the Milwaukee. And they're called the Axe. I think it's an all-purpose blade, but those blades okay. are, they're meaty, so solid. I've never, I shouldn't say never, I've broke so few of them. They always go dull before they break, and they last forever. They last I buy so long, yeah, because we a bought- A pack a year, maybe? Yeah, we bought a pack when we first went to the cabin. So we ripped all of the pallets for the outhouse, and then we ripped a ton of pallets doing all the interior work. I think we got a new set. I think I like, bought one on other pack, van. packs of five. S- yeah, when we started on yeah. the van, we bought a new pack. So we built all of the furniture in the house and the outhouse with those. Oh, <laughs> no, wow. wow. They last. They last forever. Yes. They're a little pricier, but not really that much. Not enough to compare. Yeah. For how long they last, too, it's yeah. probably way worth it. Mm-hmm. Well, that is valuable that's to awesome. know. We're, like, taking notes over here because we're going to be working <laughs> with pallets. So that's fabulous to know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a good technique for getting the, the nails out afterward, or do you just kind of work around them? I use a punch to punch them out. If whenever I'm going to cut through them. But otherwise, I leave them. It, sometimes yeah. they stay in. Sometimes they fall out. We run a lot of magnets. We, yeah. <laughs> we also, the like, nails. the ends get a lot. A lot of times they get really split, and we just, like, chop the ends off. Yeah, too, I cut the bad. cracks and the nails out. But, but the yeah. punch works good, too, if you just have a little punch, and you can just go through and quickly knock them out mm-hmm. if you wanted to get them all out. So, so. that they don't come yeah. out later. Yeah, or if you're having to plane them or whatever mm-hmm. else you wanted to do. One of the plans is to build a little TV stand. I was wanting to use, for the supporting structure, for the uprights, use the material that's on the, the sides. The oh, the insides? Yeah. Yeah. I've not come up with a way to get those out. Okay. Sometimes if you cut them clean, off, they're though. hard. So if you could find yeah. one that has a little less nails. Yeah, I mean, you could go through and pull them. There was a comment. They would take pallets and they would drop them on their corners to try and loosen them up. Mm-hmm. And she said that they took apart a lot of them and that worked really well. Yeah. Doing that maybe even before you cut them yeah. would help. But if you cut them when they're nice and tight, then all the nails cut off nice yeah. and flush. They bounce really <clears throat> bad if, if it's loose. Mm-hmm. Patty Nelson had a fish question. Patty asked, what kind of fish did you get? And are they going to grow big enough to eat? Yes and yes. We. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a, they're tilapia. And yeah, we're growing them to eat. We love so, tilapia. Yeah. It's really good so, fish. Hopefully, aquaponics tilapia will be just as good. I can't imagine. Okay. Bryson, I'm sure. Bryson's Wait, I, we actually have Bryson. one that's close to. Oh. I mean, it's Let's eat it. Have you weighed big. it? No, I haven't we weighed it. We have a fish scale. However, have a fish scale. I've been using it on the kids. <laughs> that is actually kind of funny. But <laughs> actually, I just. Uh, <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out like a couple days ago there's a bunch of baby fish Ooh, that are in there. Nice. Um, I've got about five of them new ones that have actually gotten onto the other tank. So they've swam they're through like, the, Bye, Mom. the nice. lines. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, we're now. old enough now. <laughs> Goodbye. And they like, you know, swam through the line. Oh, but that's awesome, right? That's really cool. I believe that this is a reference to the van. Kim Brendan uh, said, where is the babies going to sleep? The babies aren't coming with us. <laughs> Wow. That's what Grandma Grandpa's for. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma Grandpa would be like, yes, absolutely. You just drop off yeah. anytime, we'll be right here. Exactly. Yeah. No, we, we haven't gotten a for sure plan, but we're coming up with that still. Trying we have bits, like maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We we have dirty. the big space that's in front of like the kitchen cabinet there that we could always make something like maybe a little tiny pack and play for Kinsley and like a little tiny bed for Azalea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like we've had the front. comments yeah. too about beds that could come out from the doors. Yeah, that's a there. great idea. Yeah, or even uh, across the front seats, potentially. We could yeah. build something that sits in there. Mm. That's what I was thinking. We could put Azalea, yeah, yeah, and then we could use yeah. a real pack and play for Kensley right in front of We could just throw a mat on the ground, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that, that's the fun part of camping as kids. Yeah. Is like wherever you sleep in funky places, you get to go somewhere exciting and new. So, mm-hmm. not the and ground, memories. not a mat on the ground, mat on the floor. Yeah. Catherine Stone asks, "Do you have a swamp cooler that you're using to keep cool?" Yeah, that's that's what we use. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was weird starting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you do this one, babe. <laughs> we have a swamp cooler on our house, but we also have a swamp cooler that a neighbor gave us. It was an old one, and Garen built like a big tall stand and it's blowing just like it's a massive section that blows out from the bottom and we point it right at the shop area into the van and it keeps the kids cool and us cooler and it's it's really nice and dogs it's yeah. sweet yeah the <laughs> diesel does not get up no <laughs> <laughs> and that thing finally 
you brought mm-hmm. the air in outside yeah. and needed this. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool, though. <laughs> well, I think that that is going to wrap it up for us this week. Thank you so much for the wonderful comments and suggestions and questions that you send in. We really appreciate it. I know Jared and I got an overflowing of just wonderful, incredibly mm-hmm. helpful information. We'll be picking out the type of paint. We'll be letting you know what, what we ended up deciding on. And thank you for your, your black room stories. This is really fun to go through, too. I was really excited. So. <laughs> and all the comments, too, for Garen and Ellie. Mm-hmm. So really appreciate mm-hmm. it. It's just you. super yeah. fun. So, so sweet. <laughs> and thank you for being a part of our family. And we look forward to hanging out with you on Wednesday for, I think it's going to be the completion of the outdoor shower build yeah. that we've got. Oh, that's outdoor. the hope. That's the hope. That's exciting. Oh, the completion. So it's one you absolutely don't want to miss. Really oh, super yeah, excited definitely. for that. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.